Air quality gets impacted by multiple sources. There is no one culprit for low air quality. do a little bit of education day that had nothing to do with our nonsense. We wanted to talk a little bit about mental health and air quality. So as you probably know, pollution bad, greenhouse gas is bad, climate change happening. Also well, bad. if you're a person who happens to have, I don't know, let's say asthma. allergies, asthma are deeply and poorly affected by ozone, spoiler alert, you're going to have a bad time. We're in the Midwest, and there were two days that I barely remember because I kept falling asleep. Oh, no, and I wake up with headaches and everything on some of the poor air quality days, too. And then I've got a sore throat for a few days, and it sucks. Air Quality Awareness Week. Air quality facts you need to know. What should you know about air quality for both in for outdoors and indoor air? We put together some top facts that anyone must know about air quality. And this is important to us because this is what affects us. This is what stops us from streaming as much as we'd like. 11 things to know about air quality. Number one, air quality affects everyone. You don't need to live near a hot spot for pollution to feel the effects it has on air quality. Weather changes, atmosphere can carry air with poor quality all across the globe. Different pollutions contribute to air quality. There are three main forms of pollution that negatively impact air quality. Nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, and ozone near the ground all pose risks to your health when you breathe them in. These pollutants trigger or exasperate health problems for many people. By the way, I love AccuWeather because they'll give you, like, if you put your city in, they will show a car, um, one of the, the tabs of data that they have is the air quality index. And then that also gets broken down into which pollutants are, are the biggest issue at the moment. Very helpful. So three, air quality pollution causes certain symptoms. How can you know if the air quality in your area is affecting you? The symptoms of air quality issues typically include shortness of breath or irritation to the eyes, nose, and throat. If you have respiratory issues such as asthma, low air quality will make those issues worse. Poor air quality can even damage the cardiovascular system, including your heart. The longer you're exposed to low air quality, the worse the problems can become. Air quality doesn't just impact your physical health, it can also cause mental health to deteriorate. 2017 study found exposure to higher levels of fine, finer particulate matter is associated with higher levels of psychological distress. By the way, got that article next. I got this one. Air quality matters because we breathe a lot of air. On average, an adult breathes with over 2,000 gallons of air per day. That's a lot of air. If air quality is low, all the, that breathing will quickly result in health problems and with physical exertion, you breathe even more air. Poor air quality can be deadly. Over time, health-related air quality issues will grow. Long-term exposure can result in early death that's how serious air quality is. Exercise cannot pr protect you from poor air quality. When it comes to most health risks, more exercise is part of the solution. But when it comes to air quality, more exercise will only make things worse. Even if you work out indoors, indoor air can still be impacted by air quality concerns. However, an outdoor workout puts you the most at risk. When you exercise, you take faster, deeper breaths, which gets pollution into your respiratory system even faster. Whether you work out because you want to or you do physical activity for your job, Getting exercise when the air quality is low can cause more harm than good. One of the reasons we want to talk about this is this is one of the reasons why we have chemical sensitivities and migraines. This stuff happens. Stuff like absolutely contributes to dealing with multiple you know, issues. Seven, children are especially at risk from low air quality. You might think that children breathe less air than adults since they're smaller. But in truth, children actually breathe more air than adults and tend to be more sensitive to air pollution. Because children are smaller, they have narrow, narrower air passages. This means it takes less inflammation to block the airways of a child. Children also often do more physical activity and spend more time playing outside than adults do. This outdoor time means the effects of, low, of a low quality index build up even faster in kids. Plus, kids are more prone to asthma, which makes air quality effects even worse. Seniors may also suffer from air quality issues. Seniors are another population that's especially vulnerable during an air quality alert. If seniors have existing heart or respiratory problems, that makes the risk even worse. However, in general, the health risks associated with old age become more threatening when air quality levels drop. Low air quality damages the environment. Air quality does, doesn't just pose a risk to human health. These issues can also pose a risk to the environment and nature. Animals who breathe low quality air can also suffer from respiratory and related 
issues. However, even airborne pollution that doesn't affect humans and animals can still it, still impact the environment. Even crops can suffer as rising ozone levels damage vegetation. Air quality gets impacted by multiple sources. There is no one culprit for low air quality. Some air quality issues have natural causes, while others are man-made. For example, volcanic eruptions can significantly damage air quality. However, burning fossil fuels, agriculture, manufacturing, and other human activities can also harm air quality. Air Quality Awareness Week happens every year. Not everyone is aware of all these air quality facts. However, each year in May, Air Quality Awareness Week serves to call attention to important air pollution facts like these. Knowledge and research play an important role in the future of our air quality. So again, you're probably wondering why this matters. And the thing is, is this is where we get into the part that kind of is in our wheelhouse. Bad air pollution linked to increased psychological distress. A study reveals that the brain, not just the heart and lungs, may be negatively impacted by exposure to air pollution, researchers note. Air pollution is one of the biggest threats to human health behind high blood pressure, dietary risks, and smoking, and has been linked to mental distress as well. A study from the University of Washington published in November 2017 found a higher rate of mental distress in high pollution areas. The study is the first of its kind to utilize data from the United States to assess the relationship between exposure to air pollution and reports of psychological distress. Our study finds that the brain, not just the heart and lungs, may be negatively impacted by pollu exposure to air pollution, says Victoria Sass, PhD, student at University of Washington. The study suggests that public health efforts to reduce the personal and societal costs of mental illness should consider addressing not only individual characteristics and factors in social environment, but also facets of the physical environment, such as air pollution. Our study finds evidence that exposure to higher levels of fine particulate matter is associated with higher levels of psychological distress, Sass says. Sass thinks the main finding is extremely compelling and warrants further research. The literature on the effects of air pollution for respiratory and cardiovascular disease is pretty well documented, but not a lot has been done on the effects of air pollution directly on the brain, Sass says. During the research, they looked at pollution levels between 1999 and 2011, as well as a population samples, self-reported psychological stress, which includes their feelings of hopelessness, sadness, and nervousness. Sass and her colleagues found the psychological distress scores in high pollution areas were 17% higher even after controlling for several behavior and socioeconomic and health factors. Sass and her colleagues found it to 17%. And Sass said understanding the mechanisms by which air pollution impacts psychological distress was beyond the scope of this study, but it does warrant further research. It is important to note that the associate associations we found were not the same for all groups or pollutants, and thus we need to do a to need a fuller examination into the direct and indirect ways in which air pollution acts on mental health, Sass says. So, like, again, as things get worse because of climate change, not only are you going to have people affected more with asthma and stuff like that, but you're also probably going to have issues with this stuff. So I just, it's, again, it's something to keep in mind. Well, and this is pretty big because, you know, we really do have to rely on various government agencies, political forces to take care of these things, right? You know, it's a pretty big one. So, so you know us, we always want to share what, can be helpful in these situations. So they have a how to stay protected from air pollution. Keep your windows rolled up in the car to protect yourself from oxides. Obviously, if you don't have air conditioning, that's a non-issue for you. My apologies. Two, check the air filters in your home. It may be time to replace them, which is important because the filter stops working when they are clogged with buildup for air pollution. Changing your filters regularly in your furnace or yelling at your, your uh, landlord to do so is super important. By the way, they should be changed every three months, and that's a max of three months. And Coughing is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. Right? The big thing with uh, air filters is that even if you can't see the visible change in them, there still is change happening. They're still doing their job. You'll need to change them. Invest in an air purifier with a HEPA filter to help your home air filters work better. Again, you can get these anywhere between like $50 to $200. There's some really good ones that came out during the pandemic. I'm forgetting, I'm trying to remember the company of ours. That made HEPA our... filters. Oh, it's HAFA, right? Yes, H-A-T-H-A. -H -A. HAFA, yeah, that's right. I think it's HAFA Space. HAFA Space, like that. yeah, that's it. If you live in an area prone to severe air pollution or extreme conditions like wildfires, keep tabs on the air quality using the uh, AccuWeather air quality blog. On days when the air quality is very bad, wear an air mask when you need to be outside for prolonged times. So again, we said before, we still wear masks in public places. This is one mm -hmm. of the reasons, because this shit still affects us. If you have a heart or respiration problem, or respiratory problems, always carry your medication with you when you go outside. So, for example, I have mild, I have mild asthma. My butyl inhaler is right here. I have one in my purse as well. Be extra cautious when you exercise outside. When you're physically active, you breathe deeper and faster, putting yourself in greater contact with air pollutants to avoid air pollution while exercising. 
Try to avoid busy roads or commercial areas where there's lots of traffic. A lot less traffic. A lot less traffic, excuse yeah. me. Preventing air pollution at home. To maintain clean air at home, it's important to follow best practices that reduce the likelihood that you may be causing pollutants yourself. Steps you can take to avoid generating home air pollution include 1. Avoid smoking inside. 2. Fix leaks or water filtration problems to prevent mold growth. 3. Use environmentally friendly household products and materials. 4. Install a carbon monoxide detector and avoid using appliances that operate on gas or propane inside. 5. Measure the concentration of radon in your home with a measuring instrument called a dosimeter. 6. Turn on the range hood when cooking. The hood should be vented outside. 7. Turn on the bathroom fan each time someone takes a shower or a bath. And that one's especially good about like helping prevent the mold. A lot of grilling and cooking does create carcinogens. So that's why it's, you know, the grill marks, right? The blackened stuff. Like there's our last little no, paragraph the, down here. It just says you can avoid most dangers to live a healthy life, but you can't keep yourself from breathing. That's why it's important to take air pollution seriously and to understand the best ways to avoid pollutants that can do us harm. There you go. We can show them the AccuWeather's air quality index. Yeah, I can bring it up. Okay, so here's what they do. And it's actually pretty cool. In Western Oregon, today's air quality is fair based on AQI. It's the air quality index. And they even rate the breakdown by... Um, ozone, particulate matter, fine particulate matter, and nitrogen dioxide. And I think a few more things too, but those are the kind of the big ones to my knowledge. And then here's a big map. And you can see kind of based on how things are. But if we go out, suddenly things get very different. It's very weird that the air quality is so bad over the ocean. Uh, not a fan of that. But anyway. Well, again, it can travel. Um, hey, look, Los Angeles. Let's go to Los Angeles. Let's see what yeah, the... the... The purple and indigo, by the way, is dangerous. So Very yellow, it's, so it's, it's poor. poor. But over um, here, I'm assuming because I don't know why it's that bad, but apparently that part of that's part of, it's like California, Mexico line. Yeah, that's just bad there. Let's see if other places are bad. It's not great in the ocean. And this stuff can all travel. Apparently it's just based in Canada right now. At least right now. When the wildfires come along, um, all this stuff can travel across the country, too. We wanted to talk about this because it's I think we want to start bringing in more of the mental health stuff. And I think one of the big concerns was how do we start bringing in more mental health stuff where we're able to start discussing kind of larger factors, right? It's not just like the the stuff that affects you at a current level. It's it's the what does the environment do? What does family systems do? Things like that. And and this is kind of the beginning of that. So, yeah, unless you have anything else you want to add kisses, we can kind of call that one here. Um, No, no, I think we're good. OK, yeah. awesome. All right, guys, we will see you in the next one.